Hello dear friends, we're going to be painting some spring delicate florals today. I saw this technique um, and I'm going to include the inspo in the description as I always do. I'm going to try it for myself. I don't know if I'm going to do this right. It's my first time trying it. But what we're going to do is take, uh, you can choose any floral color that you want. I'm going to go with like a pink or a magenta. And you want to pick up um, a lot of color on your paintbrush, not so much water. Uh, enough to create these little droplets on your paper. So we're going to picture this being like a, uh, gosh, I'm not really good with flower names, but it's, going to be a stem that comes down like this with these delicate flower petal balls, I guess. Um, but the way we're going to create them, I've got tape stuck to my arm, is uh, we're going to drop these little droplets. Uh, so we're going to have a one and it's just we're gonna drop like going down like this And then when you get to the bottom, you want to kind of taper it off a little bit, like that. And I'm going to have another one. This time I'm going to use more of a pink. So same thing. Same technique, same deal. You want to make them as circular as you can. Unfortunately, mine are coming out more like lines, but what can you do? So once you have that pattern down, uh, we're going to um, take a slightly larger. So I used a size one there. So now I'm switching to my size eight paintbrush. I've wet it so that there's a little bit of water on there and I'm going to go over each of these petals. This is what you want to avoid, what I just did there. Because um, you want to make them as round as you can. And if you've, like, I'm going a little bit slow here, but Try to work quickly so that, see, these already dried. This isn't going to work. Maybe just do one at a time to avoid it from drying. Because you also don't want, you know, it to show, like, the pattern of what you dropped earlier to show through. You, you don't want that. And that is what is unfortunately happening with mine. So, uh, every few petals... I am rinsing my brush in water because I don't want each and every one to be super dark. I do, I want to bring out the color from the center of the round petal that I'm creating, but I don't want the entire thing to be this dark blob and I'll, you'll see why in a bit, but I would recommend doing one flower petal or sorry one uh, flower bunch at a time don't do both because they dry too quickly whoops
Okay, so before these have a chance to dry, you're gonna do the exact same thing again. Um, but before you do that, you want to take uh, green or black, like a dark green or a black, whatever you prefer. I'm using my size one, but I might switch to a thinner one. And um, you're gonna draw a very, as thin of a line as you can going down the center of your flower bunch. Whoops, I kind of messed that one up. <laughs> oh boy. Sort of like that. You gotta work quickly though, because mine are gonna dry too too quickly, I already know. Okay. So you can switch to an even bigger round brush. I'm using my size 14 for this. And we are doing the same thing again that we did the previous time, but we are taking a little bit more effort to make them nice and round. And again, I'm dipping my paintbrush into water in between each one. And I am trying to extend them, these flower petals, closer to my stem because I made them a bit far apart. Maybe in a second attempt, it would be better to make, uh, draw the, or paint the stem first. That's obviously hindsight, right? So as we do this gradually, we're making these petals lighter and more delicate. Now we wanna do the same thing over here. I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can get a closer look at what I'm doing. So once you've done that, you can switch to a smaller brush again. I think I'm gonna switch to my size one. I'm gonna pick up yellow this time. And we are going to drop that yellow into a portion of the center of like our petals. You don't have to do it into all of them. And then once you've dropped it into the center, you can grab, again, I'm switching to my size eight and I'm going to try and spread it out, but I want to make these a little bit lighter because they kind of turned out a lot darker than I thought they were going to be. And I'm wiping my, my paintbrush on a paper towel 
between each petal to try and get a clean brush on each one. Okay, I'm going to zoom back out for a minute here. What I'm going to do is switch to my quadruple zero. I'm going to pick up some black watercolor and I want to define the stem a little bit. Even border some of these petals with black See if that makes a difference in bringing out the intensity a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing on my second one here. So I'm going back. I didn't like how some of that black spread into um, into each leaf. It didn't make it look that great. So I'm just going back over it, trying to pick some of it up in both uh, flower bunches. I don't know about you guys, but this is pretty pathetic. It does not look like what I thought it was going to look like at all. Um, what can we do to spruce this up? Because honestly, it does not look like I just did three or four layers. It just looks like I did one layer and, and that's how it turned out. I don't like it at all. So let me experiment here. I'm just dropping some pink into the center. I'm going to do the same thing with the magenta here. I'm going to try the yellow again. I like the yellow a little bit more. The yellow adds a little bit more spruce, spruceness. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna like add a little more uh, some black stems. Maybe we're gonna have one kind of 
popping out like this. Maybe we're going to have one popping out like that. When something doesn't work out how you thought it was going to work out, just give it another try. Or like, try different things, because if it already looks horrible, you don't really have very much to lose. Right? At least that's how I think of it. Okay. Thought it added something. <laughs> going to try this again the same technique this time I'm trying to be a little bit more careful with uh, the roundness so we're kind of doing a little bit different this differently this way where we painted the stem first and then we're adding those um, colorful bulbs or buds whatever the heck they were supposed to be and I'm going to try not to do too many at once. Whoops, sorry. Because we know how that worked out the first time. Okay, I, I really like how these ones are turning out. They're much more delicate. They have that pigment more concentrated in the center. What do you think? That looks a lot nicer to me than what we did initially. Um, and I would attribute that partly to making the initial blob like actually circular I would say and partly because I didn't let them dry so much before um before going over them right but this is all practice it's all trial and Trial and error. There we go. Whoops, I am knocking everything over over here. So I'm going to have another one here. Here on this side. Maybe one here. And I'm still going to add that yellow. I really liked the yellow accents that we added initially. You know, you don't have to add it to all of them. You don't want to. Whoops, that's wrong side. But I do think it added something nice to, to them. I don't think they even need adjustment. Like, you don't even need to go over where you added yellow. They look quite nice as they are. What do you think? This one needs some rounding. Very nice. I Okay, I'm happy. See, I'm glad we did that. I'm glad we added some more variation because that ended up not looking too, too bad. The other thing we can do to spruce this up just a tiny bit more is add some uh splatters to it so i'm going to take black and just that is a bit too much but <laughs> it 
just like that. And I'm quite okay with how that turned out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next tutorial.